Hey there, Holly. My name is Joel Filipponi, and I'm here to give a presentation on unemployment. Through discussion with my group members, Brody, Jordan, and Sharon, we chose the topic of unemployment, and I'm here to give you a better understanding of what it is and how it can affect individuals. Unemployment is simply the situation of having no work, but continually seeking and searching for work. People are classified as unemployed if they, are fulfill, if they fulfill the following three criteria. Do not have a job, have actively looked for work in the prior four weeks, and are currently available for work. This is a good topic to choose at this current moment, as due to the coronavirus, a lot of people have been laid off work and are currently not working at this moment. During periods of recession, an economy usually experiences high unemployment rates. The unemployment rate in Australia has understandingly um, skyrocketed during this tough time. But we just need to support one another as we all, all would know someone who is currently affected by this virus. There are potential vigorous consequences that come with unemployment if not dealt with correctly, and not just for the individuals who did lose their job, but for the ones they care for also. A lot of individual variables influence the outcome and the way unemployment affects people such as age, gender, ethnic background, social class, financial strain, and social support. The struggle with unemployment is that individuals are unable to earn money to meet any financial obligations, obtain key essentials such as food or water, and failure to afford mortgage or rent payments, which can potentially lead to homelessness through expulsion. Being unemployed inflates the vulnerability to such mental problems such as anxiety disorders, depression, and suicide. The value of self-respect and self-esteem easily vanish with the job loss. And in addition to this, Unemployed people tend to have increased rates of medication use, poorer diets, smoking, alcohol and drug abuse. Unemployment can also cause social problems such as crime and abuse. If individuals have a less disposable income than what they once had, it is very possible that crime levels gradually increase in the economy. Alcohol and drug abuse can also worsen these social issues, also connected to everlasting unemployment. Partner, child or family abuse and crime can boost anxiety, depression, and feelings of hopelessness that initially motivated the exploit. The loss of a job negatively affects adults' overall health and it negatively affects relationships with their significant others and can increase the likelihood of divorce. Not only does it affect people who have just lost their job, but it can affect their children also. Due to the changes on the family dynamic, the job loss can negatively affect a child's health, well-being, and accomplishments. A group of Michigan researchers found that a large number of children of parents who are unemployed are more likely to suffer from moodiness, digestive issues and delayed mental and physical health and development also. Louis Furman from the University of Michigan believed that the mental and physical issues are a result of a decreased parental care and guidance. Unemployed parents are more likely to worry about their own survival instead of trying to develop other crucial evolutional and maturing needs for the kids around them. Overall, unemployment affects the health and well-being of not only the individual who has just lost their job, but for the others around them. The movie Pursuit of Happiness is based on the story of Chris Gardiner, played by Will Smith, a man who loses everything but eventually gains everything back. In the movie, he is seen as hard-working, caring and loving father who struggles financially to provide for his son and wife. However, his talents and skills, along with his charisma and personality, earn the trust of several people. At the beginning of the movie, Chris saw a wrong word on the wall and said the famous sentence, There is no why in happiness. The only thing we can do is striving for our own happiness voluntarily. Indeed, whoever you are, you have to experience some pain or failure in your life, which is not associated with your appearance, nationality or gender. The quote, you got a dream, you got to protect it, is a saying in this movie. It goes without saying that this movie is special and encouraging, as Gardner spared no efforts to realise his dream and never gave up. Although he became a pitiful poor man, he showed us his love for his son and to an ambitious future. Chris Gardner lived a life in which he experienced unemployment and was abandoned by his wife at the same time. However, what he owned was his son. To make his son happy, Gardiner worked hard and took every opportunity to earn money. In the process of pursuing the success, he sold medical equipment, was in prison for owing money, and competed for a job without a salary for six months. Under these circumstances where we ordinary people may give up just at the very beginning, 
He insisted on encouraging himself to come to terms with the setbacks and barriers. In the end, he eventually became a renowned financial investor. He believed that if one person contributes good effort, happiness will come tomorrow. He teaches us that being a hard worker pays off and when we want or need something, we have to work for it. Life does not give out many free handouts. So in Chris Gardner's life, he was in a very low spot, but he chose to do all that he could to get out of that low spot. Low income has a clear negative effect on both happiness and life satisfaction. An important message for this association is job security, which declines during economic downturns and negatively affects workers' happiness. From the movie, we learn three important life lessons that Gardiner went through. Firstly, being poor did not stop him from being what he wanted. Chris believed that success depended only on his efforts, not fate or luck. He had a dream, he kept it and went after it. Secondly, we receive what we want after doing everything we can. After Chris lands a new job, all his problems end. We can see this from the scene at the office where one of the managers asks him, Chris, was it easy? And he replies, no sir, it wasn't. And that part of his life is what he calls happiness. And lastly, when things get dark, just relax. Because even though you don't know what will happen, you deserve a break and you should treat yourself to something nice. After all, your hard work and patience, you deserve it. Although the movie took place in 1981, unemployment is still affecting the world today. And remember, millions are also living a real pursuit of happiness in movie. Unemployment is an issue that not only affects the individual, but it also affects their family and friends and ultimately society as a whole. We see Chris Gardner who loses his wife and home and falls into the hole of unemployment. Chris has the responsibility of providing for his son and with limited money finds no other option than to get a room at one of the local homeless shelters. This is a situation that is far too common in the modern world and we see even in our city of Melbourne a large number of unemployed homeless people. Unemployment can bring on significant anxiety and stress for an individual and their family. One of the first things that can bring on stress from unemployment is no financial security. When Chris loses his job and the income from his wife, he is broke and can't afford to pay for a place to live. This leaves him with no other choice than to get a room for him and his son each day at the homeless shelters. Without a home, a person can feel lost and for Chris's son, there is no stability in his life with the constant moving around. This could lead to severe anxiety for Chris, always stressing over the safety and stability of his son. A good parent makes their child their priority and not being able to ensure their safety and stability may lead to a downward spiral of depression for the parent. There are multiple ways an individual can go after becoming unemployed. The person can have a victim's mentality and say to themselves, why me, I don't deserve this, this isn't fair. Or the person can take charge and try to do something about it by increasing their skills or searching for a new job. Luckily for himself and his son, Chris has a proactive mentality and actively seeks new jobs going around the city trying to sell himself. This mentality not only has a positive effect on Chris, but it is also setting a good example for his son. However, for many people who are unemployed, they adopt a victim's mentality, which is understandable but not desirable in overcoming the issue. A victim's mentality can lead to dependence on friends and family from the individual, which in some cases can damage a relationship. Yet sometimes it may need, be needed for a person who has become unemployed to lean on friends and family for help and support. For Chris's son growing up in a world where you are homeless as a result of your dad's unemployment, it is far different than that of the life of a normal child. We see the impact that this has on his son and he is constantly taken to different places each night to sleep and at one stage is taken to sleep in a subway station restroom. This may lead to anxiety for his son as he may not feel safe going to sleep at night. This could then lead to a lack of sufficient sleep which may ultimately impact his son's development. A lack of sleep may cause memory issues, mood changes and a weakened immune system and can be common in individuals who have excessive stress and anxiety which may be brought upon from unemployment. Unemployment can lead an individual to crime which has an effect on society as a whole. Without a job, Chris doesn't have the money to pay for simple things and we see him commit a crime by doing a run on a taxi. By breaking the law, the individual may find themselves going down a further negative spiral, possibly leading to, f to fines, community service, or even jail time. 
Chris's unemployment has now affected the taxi driver and led to a loss of income for him and ultimately society as a whole. Statistics of crime in many countries show that unemployment and crime are closely related. However, these crimes are usually non-violent and are more commonly property crimes. The implications of unemployment go far beyond the individual. However, with the right intervention and implementations of services and strategies, an individual may overcome these implications. There are many ways to deal with unemployment. One of these ways of coping with unemployment is by joining handling unemployment groups or HUG, in which unemployed people join to help understand each of the job loss stages, which vary from person to person depending on their support systems, age, family, and also financial situations. In a study done by Alan Passmore, it was found that handling unemployment groups were the most highly valued component of their participants' support for being unemployed. Our case study, Chris Gardner, could have used HUG to help him deal with the hard times when he was homeless and only had $15 in his account. And it would have possibly also helped him deal with the struggles of raising a five-year-old. One of the negative aspects of handling unemployment groups could, in Chris's case, be that he never asked for help once. So for people like that who don't like asking for help, regardless of their situation and how much they need it, these strat this strategy might be less effective. Another negative aspect could be that these groups offered a quick fix for the problem rather than a long-term solution. Then they might take the quick fix and eventually end up back exactly where they started, putting them in an unhealthy cycle of being in and out of these groups rather than solving it then and there. Another strategy to handle unemployment is by showing personal initiative and proactive job searching. It was found in a study by Lance and Anderson that people who show personal initiative are more likely to be proactive job searchers when unemployed. Our case study, Chris Gardner, actually used this strategy to handle his own unemployment and it worked very effectively for him and helped him get another job. By showing personal initiative and introducing himself to Jay Twistle, who was the manager for Dean Widow Reynolds, and then bombarding him until he was given the chance to talk to him, which then earned him an interview. From there, he earned the internship and eventual job from showing personal initiative to impress his superiors in every way he could even if it was slightly demeaning or detrimental to himself and his financial situation. There aren't many negative aspects to this strategy. However, one of these is one that Chris faced himself, which was that by showing initiative, it often involves doing things for little or no money, which can be difficult to handle when the person is already in a difficult financial situation. The lack of income and also the fact that there is no guaranteed income at the end means that there are off means that often the unemployed person will have to look at the risk versus reward of their situation and decide what works best for them. Volunteering is another name for this way of handling unemployment and can often be a way to mediate the impact of losing a job without having an actual job that earns income. In a report by Tannis and Smith, it was found that participants volunteered so they can take their minds off the problems surrounding being unemployed. The same report states that job seekers and job service providers hold volunteering as having an important role in gaining employment. Following these findings, the fact that our case study, Chris Gardner, volunteered for the internships for Dean Widder Reynolds and accepted gave him the best opportunity of getting the job because without this, it was highly unlikely that he would have gotten the job. The best way to handle unemployment would be to implement all these strategies together. So to be part of a handling unemployment group while still volunteering and applying personal initiative to job seeking. Because by using all these strategies together, you're cancelling out the negative aspects of using each of these strategies individually. By using all of these strategies, Chris would not only have still achieved his goal of getting a job to support his son, but also handle the situation in a better and more effective way while not having to be under so much pressure. By following this strategy, the only direction he could have gone is up.